Hi, welcome to Miller Guide. I recently had a conversation with Kent McLeod, who is the clinical pharmacist and owner of NutriChem Compounding Pharmacy and Clinic here in Ottawa. Kent has the opportunity to treat a wide range of clients and shared his thoughts with me on treating women and men with osteoporosis. In this segment, I asked Kent to comment on the use of calcium and vitamin D. Again, all along, I, I've never been a fan of, high, of these high calcium dose recommendations. We've, um, we, we, Canada is one of the highest consuming na calcium nations in the world with the highest or one of the highest rates of osteoporosis. We've always known that the absorption of calcium is, is, is strictly dependent on vitamin D levels and all studies on calcium are, uh, and bone density has always been related to or confounded by vitamin D levels. As soon as we get a milk study, we seem to actually see that it's the vitamin D that may correlate to bone health, not the calcium levels. So again, um, you know, there's whole societies and whole populations that really aren't supplemented with calcium at all in their diets or don't have these crazy recommendations and they have far less osteoporosis than we do. And where we, we overdo things, I mean, stuffing women full of calcium and not measuring their vitamin D is just madness. The problem is, of course, is that still, even now, when I measure vitamin D, which people pay for, most of the times they're still deficient. They're not getting enough vitamin D. And as we, we well know that 25% of the population don't have a linear relationship, meaning to intake and vitamin D levels, meaning they have to take more than what the average person would take for a number of reasons to get vitamin D levels that would either prevent bone loss or even higher, we're seeing that certain levels even prevent you know, breast cancer and other cancers. Mm -hmm.